Welcome to Jags Drive Time with Ashlyn Sullivan, John Osher, and Brian Sexton. Jags Drive Time starts right now. Yes, I'm really ready to get in the past now because I've been out of pass for so long since the national championship and just finally be able to really strike somebody and be physical as I can. Like, I'm ready to get back into that. Like Trayvon Walker, I think we all can agree we are ready for the pads to go on this Sunday. But until then, we have a ton to talk about. It is day four of training camp here at Episcopal High School, and it is our first Jaguars drive time back of the 2022 season. Ashlyn Sullivan, Brian Sexton, Jeff Lagerman here with you live. It is day four. We have a lot to talk about, Brian. It's been an eventful offseason. We're finally seeing some football, which is nice. Finally. And, you know, <laughs> you talk about the pads coming on. And Jeff, obviously, we go back to a time where you were wearing pads twice a day, <laughs> much to your chagrin. Um, and they've been smart with players, you know, through the offseason into camp here, the way that they've put the gladiator shields on the helmets and things of that nature. What do you expect when pads go on? Are they still going to be smart or are we going to see just limited parts of hitting or do you expect them to go old school? Well, let me start with this and that uh, I think the way that it is or what has, be, has become is incredible. Uh, the safety first up with the helmet protectors, the acclimation periods, the way they work the players into it. I think that's smart. Uh, and boy, I wish it existed all the way back when I was playing because I mean it's just smart right uh, what it will be like when it gets to pads I can tell you this Doug Peterson from my understanding is going to run a very demanding camp now that's as demanding as you can run under the CBA rules so how demanding can that be well, a lot of the old timers would say ah these guys they got you know, they don't know how good they got it but you can still make a very demanding camp within the rules and I expect Doug to make it as demanding as he can in the offseason we saw this this time of healing the time of healing is over. Yep. Right? The time for football is now. Very true, and that brings us right into big things. Big thing one is the vibe, and I will say, we talk about it so much in the offseason, I almost forgot about it, but with all the national media here, everyone is talking about how different this team feels. And I think Josh Allen said it best earlier this week, under Doug Peterson, things are just different. Man, it feels good to be <laughs> To be a part, you know, just to be a part of professional locker room, not only in the locker room, but when you talk to the coaches, it's a professional setting. You know what I'm saying? It's, you got to hone on to the details. You know what I'm saying? If you're not listening to details, you know, it's not getting on you. It's telling them what's right and what's wrong. And, you know, as guys, as grown men, we need to understand that. And he's puts it in a way we can understand it and grow. He's not getting on us. He's letting us know what's real. And he's talking to us like grown men. Big thing, too, is next steps for Trevor Lawrence. We're all hoping to see that second year jump that we maybe saw with a Justin Herbert or a Joe Burrow. For now, we're seeing Trevor progress every single day on the training camp and offensive coordinator Press Taylor gave a great example of that. I know and I've seen how hard he's worked to get himself back uh, this spring, this summer. You know, he's, he was here all summer working with the guys and, and with Fergie and the medical team. and. Uh, he's done a great job of putting himself in a position to where we don't have to do that, and, and uh, but still, still be cautious with him, and um, you know, make sure he's ready when when he's ready. And finally, big thing three is the return of James Robinson and Travis Etienne, both on the practice field all four days this week for training camp. Travis Etienne running with the ones all week. He had a run yesterday that coaches were yelling bye bye. That was really cool to see. And James Robinson running off to the side, but the key is that he is running. That alone is huge. I know and I've seen how hard he's worked to get himself back uh, this spring, this summer. You know, he's, he was here all summer working with the guys and, and with Fergie and the medical team. And uh, he's done a great job of putting himself in a position to where we don't have to do that. And, and uh, but still, still be cautious with him and, um, you know, make sure he's ready when, when he's ready. And there you have it. Those are big things. We are live here from training camp on a Thursday, day four of training camp. Player day off tomorrow, practice Saturday and Sunday. Sunday pads go on, but Jeff, we go back to big thing three. I think it's the biggest story of training camp because I forget James Robinson just tore his Achilles in December. For him to be back, not on pup, is huge. 
Well, and I think there's two reasons why he's not on PUP. Uh, number one is is that you don't have a facility at the stadium right now, so you need to be able to have the player on the grass rehabilitating. I don't expect James Robinson to be ready maybe until November, I'm, and maybe I'm a little on the pessimistic no, side. No, I think that's realistic. But you got to be cautious. 100%. You're talking about, uh, I don't want to say he's the greatest franchise running back ever because it's Fred Taylor, Maurice Jones, Drew. Right. But he's a great player, and, and we saw a couple years ago he was the best offensive weapon. So you got to be patient, and that's doing him right. Well, you know, he's not an explosive guy anyway. You want to make sure you get him back to what he does really well, which he's got that innate sense of what's happening around him and that side-slide movement where he just takes advantage of the opportunity that's there. So I would rather have him closer to 100% than say, well, at least I've got James Robinson at 80%. I think he's better in November. Mm -hmm. Remember now. This Achilles thing, you've yeah. seen guys not come back from it. So make sure you give yourself your best opportunity. The, the running back for the Rams that came back last year. Okay. Uh, Zach. Um, Was it Cam Akers? Oh, no, you're right, Cam yes, Akers. Cam, Cam Akers. Akers comes back in like six months. That's the exception. Yeah, and, and he so wasn't a lot explosive. Of people, yeah, and a lot of people kind of see that and say, well, that should be the rule for right. James Robinson. That's not the case. That, that's just one of those rare occurrences of a player coming back, and he was very fortunate. Much like Jerry Rice came back from an ACL, I think, in like five months. Right. <laughs> yeah, was Rod Woodson was the only other guy that ever did that, and that's, I mean, that's freakish athleticism. Mm -hmm. So I think that's good to hear because I think it has been a little misleading this week when we see James Robinson on the field in uniform and, and you're seeing on Twitter, oh, my gosh, he's back. He's going to start week one. To hear that, it almost makes you feel better because you think week one, man, that's really soon. Well, and, and let, well, let me explain something about what I said about not being on PUP. Okay, if, if you're on PUP, you can't be around football. Right. Yeah. Okay, you can't be around football coaches. You can't be around the football drills. You would are essentially limited to working with an athletic trainer. Your facility is under construction. The only thing that you really have to work at would be an indoor facility. And, and the reality is, is having one additional player on the roster gonna make you that much better to where you're saying, okay, we need that roster spot for training camp? 100%. No, yes. it's it, the best thing right. in the world is for James Robinson to have the best access to rehabilitation that he does, which is these luxurious grass fields that we are on, by the way, which is amazing it here is at Episcopal amazing. High School. I think it's worth noting that you can be comfortable, because we thought, yeah, Travis Etienne coming back from a Liz Frank, which is another career ender generally for yep. a running yep. back. We've seen that happen before. And James Robinson with the Achilles. Well, yesterday we saw that run by Travis Etienne yeah. and we went, okay, you can feel comfortable that one of your two guys is going to be ready to go on opening day. And with him, where he hit that second gear and you heard the coaches saying bye-bye, it was awesome. Like, okay, that's what I needed to see. And to give people a little idea of the play that we're talking about, it was essentially an inside zone. And then Rayshon Jenkins, the safety, comes down, and then all of a sudden Travis bounces it to the outside, right. and then Great that's vision. where that second gear you're talking about it was. And until we it saw like, it, we didn't, we didn't know it was coming back. Because right. remember, Corey Grant did the exact same injury in 2018 in Kansas City. We never saw him again. So when you get this guy out there and showing us that, well, then you feel more comfortable letting James Robinson take his time. Yes, that was awesome to see. Another awesome thing to see this week has been Trevor Lawrence. And really what's been cool is you see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. All right, a progressive step forward. And I think the biggest thing for him is that it's year two. Yeah. He played all of last year. And a lot of people point to, well, it was a lost year with Urban Meyer and all that. Okay, but still he played. And Doug Peterson alluded to that the very first day before the first practice. He talked about the greatest thing that Trevor had was that he played all of last year. So he got to see the defensive looks. Yes, it's a different system this year. And, you know, I can kind of see, hear a little subtle chip on his shoulder. Brian, do you hear that yeah, when did, he talks? Yeah. And, and he's so I'm not planning good. on having a bad year, Lars. Trevor is yeah. so good about uh, the way he handles the media. Yeah. And he's... Uh, perfect wise bond is but yours. you can just read between the lines just a little bit there's a burning fire inside of him that exists obviously because of the kind of player that he is well I, what i've seen from him is taking chances down the field yeah. hitting the seams with dan arnold the other day going for the deep ball with either christian kirk or zay jones there's a comfort level he's got and i watched him walk back to doug peterson and they both nodded like that's what we're gonna <laughs> do and the smile on his face it's clear, and it would be anyway, I think, for a quarterback in his second year, but it's clear he's in control. Yes, no words need to be said, Trevor Lawrence. No. It's just improving, and we hope to see more throws like that today at training camp. We have much more live coverage of Jaguars training camp coming up on Jaguars Drive Time. You can step up to luxury now. Hello, I'm Dan Fields. 
Whatever you're driving, you can step up to luxury now. Plus, get our Fields amenities, which include complimentary loaners, car washes, and our cafes. Make this your year to step up to luxury at Fields Cadillac, Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, Land Rover, Jaguar, and Lexus. When it comes to the ultimate car buying experience, there's only one name that matters. Fields. And Fields matters because you matter. The Fields Auto Group, proud partners of your Jacksonville Jaguars. Jags fans, this is Shaquille Griffin. I'm going to share some of my secrets for competing in the NFL. First, the field is no place for hunger. Growing up, I got big and strong eating boiled peanuts. Today, our team is serious about fueling our bodies, and that means popping open some protein-packed peanuts from Luray's Peanuts. It's the same boiled peanut flavor I used to love eating as a kid, but with superfood nutrition that lets me tear it up on the field, pick Luray's boiled peanuts at all Jaguar home games, or pick up a few bags at the grocery store and fuel up at home. Move day is on the 20, the 10. Yes, another successful move to a new home. I tell you folks, I've never seen a team more prepared than the Move Day crew. With a dominating lead in training, trust, and moving efficiency, it's no wonder why Move Day is the official moving company of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Track your goods online and get updated play-by-plays throughout your move process. While the Jags are moving the chains on game day, they're here to help you on moving day. Call 844-MY-MOVE-DAY or visit movedaymovers.com. Move Day is Jacksonville's most dependable and caring local moving company. Move Day is proud to be the official moving company of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Get a free instant quote, call 844-MY-MOVE-DAY or visit movedaymovers.com. We're back, Jaguars Drive Time. Live coverage here of day four of training camp at Episcopal High School. We're back, Jaguars Drive Time. Brian, Jeff Lagerman, Ashlyn Sullivan here with you. We're watching Offensive Line live right now, and we're really excited for Sunday when we see O-Line and D-Line go together right now. It's time for He Will, He Won't, He Might, presented by Move Day. And Jeff has to go with the obvious, Trevor Lawrence, of course. Well, I've looked, Trevor is uh, is the franchise, and that's the reality. And when you pick a quarterback number one overall, and many people believe that he's a generational talent, uh, I just can't wait. I, I, I think this year – he will be the most improved quarterback in the National Football League. Wow. And from what I've seen so far, from what I've seen in the past, I don't think there's any doubt in my mind. Love to hear that, Brian. You have Dan Arnold, I yeah. believe. Yeah, so I think Dan Arnold is going to be the Jaguars version, Jeff, of Wes Welker, of uh, Danny Amendola. He's taller than those guys. Those guys were the little slot receivers, but they were crafty. And Dan Arnold is not the greatest athlete, but he has a way of getting open. We saw last year. He's got great hands, and he's just, he's got this knack for being in the right place at the right time. And I think he will become the quarterback's go to receiver on third down, the guy that you need to be able to find. Mm -hmm. um, he won't dazzle people with that explosive down the field yeah. sort of thing, um, but what he might do is have his best NFL season be a 50 catch guy and probably 30 of them will be for first downs and I think he might be a guy who can get you eight touchdowns because to he's so that. tall in the back of the end zone yeah and I will admit I had someone else and then after watching yesterday's practice I switched it to Tyson Campbell he will make a huge jump this season and it's kind of crazy to say that because if we remember the beginning of last year we were questioning if he could even play in the NFL he had a couple rough weeks we didn't know if it was going to work out he made a jump he's going to have another jump this year he won't be like normal cornerbacks. And I say that just because of his attitude. He's a quiet guy. I don't see him making this huge change in personality and having the swagger and the loudness on the field, but he might have had the all time best saying of training camp after yesterday's second pass breakup. He yelled in, in a Tyson Campbell yell, which was kind of just talking, yeah. saying, It's like Chick fil A on a Sunday. I'm closed for business. All right. So, so I, I didn't, I intentionally did not say a couple things about Trevor, and I want to say this go. to the end. Here we okay? go. Because I didn't cover the won't. Okay. <laughs> and the reason why, what did Trevor do last year that amazed everybody? He handled the handled pressure. Himself. The leadership. Yeah. Okay. And here's what he won't have to do this year is carry the burden of all that leadership mm -hmm. because of Doug Peterson right. and this staff and the players that they brought in. That's going to be, I think, the biggest reason that the quarterback will make that jump in year two. I'm so excited for him. Right. I was excited when he was drafted. <laughs> and then last year, you're like, okay, you know he's going to have rookie, rookie growing pains. Mm -hmm. But in year two, I can't wait to see what it's going to look like. So I want to go back to what you were talking about, Tyson Campbell. Mm -hmm. We saw him look lost at times last year, and that's yeah. not un un unusual for a rookie. 
What do you suppose was the difference? Was it the scheme adjustments they made or was it just time on task? Because Fred Taylor knows the kid from South Florida and said, just wait, just wait. Yeah. Was it scheme or was it him just getting more experience? I think it was partly both. And I think the scheme adjustment was significant for him because if you'll remember going back to last year when Joe Cullen was running this defense, they were trying to play a lot of man. Yeah. Well, when you play a lot of man as a defensive back, your back is turned to the quarterback. Well, they realized they couldn't play a lot of man. It wasn't being very successful. So they switched and started to play a little bit more zone, and they talked about it. Well, part of making that switch now allows Tyson Campbell to have his eyes and his body looking back towards the quarterback. That allowed him, I think, to gain some confidence, and then partly through gaining that confidence and playing better that way, then he was able to play better with his back to the quarterback mm -hmm. when he was asked to play right. man. And I'm excited about him because there's not many cornerbacks in the league, and, it, and he's similar to Jalen in, in a lot of different ways, most significantly length. There's not a lot of cornerbacks that have that length, and Tyson has the length, and when you have the speed to go with the length, now you can have something special. Yeah, pretty obvious how much more confident and, he is. And let me, add, let me add, you know, Dan Arnold, I yeah. love him, yeah. I love him, but Evan Ingram also. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How many tough oh, yeah, catches him. did yeah. you see him make, yeah. like shoestring grabs for Trevor, when everybody's raving about Trevor had no incompletions? Well, there was a couple tough catches that someone were, had to catch the ball. That That's was happened by yeah. Evan Green, uh, Evan Ingram. You know, so I think the combination of Ingram and also Dan Arnold is going to be significant. Have you read the coach's book, Doug's book, Fearless? No. Okay, it's a uh, great read. I've been raving about it for. Did he write it, or did he have somebody well, write no, it? Well, uh, uh, Dan, Dan Pompey helped write it. <laughs> uh, but the point is, is that. He talks a lot about Alshon Jeffrey mm -hmm. and the X factor that Alshon Jeffrey was on that 2017 team. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Evan Ingram is going to be because he's a big receiver and a guy that, like Dan Arnold, has a sense for where to be. Plus, I think he's got great speed, more than Dan does, yeah, and when, might be able to take advantage of that. Alshon Jeffrey did one thing for the Eagles, yeah. easy completions. Yeah. Okay. Dan Arnold, Evan Ingram, Travis Etienne. Those are three players that are going to give uh, our quarterback – easy completions and as a quarterback you want to have easy completions because it keeps the ball rolling and it gives you more opportunities and so those three guys yeah. put them in the easy completion category yeah. and gaining and allowing the quarterback to gain a lot of confidence just helping trevor lawrence that is the goal of 2022 that is he will he won't he might presented by move day much more live coverage of jaguars training camp coming up You can step up to luxury now. Hello, I'm Dan Fields. Whatever you're driving, you can step up to luxury now. Plus, get our Fields amenities, which include complimentary loaners, car washes, and our cafes. Make this your year to step up to luxury at Fields Cadillac, Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, Land Rover, Jaguar, and Lexus. When it comes to the ultimate car buying experience, there's only one name that matters, Fields. And Fields matters because you matter. The Fields Auto Group, proud partners of your Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey Jags fans, Brian Sexton for DreamFinders Homes. In a complex housing market, do decisions on the biggest purchase of your life stress you out? At DreamFinders Homes, they can build the home of your dreams in one of their many communities in Northeast Florida. With a mortgage company in-house, they're here to assist you throughout the entire process. Choose from their wide range of single-family homes or townhomes from the 300,000s. DreamFinders Homes specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. Call 904-590-2545 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. At ViStar Credit Union, you inspire us to deliver on our promise, to do good for our members and our communities. That's why we offer more banking options, like better rates and no hidden fees. We also give back, donating several million dollars to hundreds of nonprofits each year. Better financial lives, stronger communities. ViStar Credit Union. Do good. Bank better. Visit ViStarCU.org slash join. Insured by NCUA. With the Jaguar season right around the corner, there's no better time to lock in your seats for 2022. Unsure where to sit? We've got you covered. Join the Jaguars at the stadium Saturday, August 6th from 10 to 2 to test out available inventory in person. Plus, enjoy fun games and door prizes for the family while Tony Baselli's Hall of Fame enshrinement ceremony plays on the video boards. Visit Jaguars.com to RSVP today. 
We're back, Jaguars Drive Time. We're live on Thursday, live from training camp at Episcopal High School. We're going to talk receivers, but I have to say, this being a high school, pretty cool that this is 10 minutes down the road. It has been seamless, and maybe that's a testament to Doug Peterson and his leadership. I haven't noticed any hiccups. Well, let me let me say what it also takes besides leadership, money. <laughs> they got that. So, yeah. so those mean, fields are spectacular. Yeah, this, this didn't just like occur out of nowhere. I mean, <laughs> yeah. so uh, but it's an it's an amazing job, and and credit to Hamza, yeah. who is on the Jaguar staff, the folks at Episcopal, uh, the grounds crew that the Jaguars have. I know it was a, a kind of a confluence of great effort to be able to make this uh, is what it is. Now, you know, if you're an Episcopal student and an athlete in particular, you're going to can't wait to get out here and practice, whether it's football or soccer or field hockey or lacrosse. I mean, it is spectacular. Yeah, and pretty cool for a high schooler to see something we just saw, which is Christian Kirk playing on this field. And this is a guy we even had the chance to talk about the wide receivers. And I remember last season, the big topic in training camp was who are going to be the six, who are going to make the team. I don't really feel like that's even a topic this year. You know who the six are, and they're noticeably different, and Christian Kirk is leading the charge. Well, first of all, uh, when I talk about the other three guys, Etienne, Dan Arnold, and Evan Ingram, easy completions, okay, the next step for a wide receiver yeah. is that's, that's your next easiest completion. And that's going to be Christian Kirk because he has been a very quarterback-friendly wide receiver because the ones that are typically closer to the quarterback you want them to be easier completions from the wide receiver group. And Evan Ingram is, a, or excuse me, uh, Christian Kirk is an outstanding slot receiver. Now, there's been talk about, well, we're going to move them all over the place because the coaches have said that. That may happen, but Christian Kirk's home and where he's comfortable and where he's best is in the slot. And if you move him out of his comfort zone, he might have success, but he won't be that dominant player. He's going to make a big difference as a slot receiver, but he will do a little bit more. Well, how much of what you've seen from Zay Jones so far gives you the confidence to just say, okay, Christian, let's put you where you've been most productive and we'll move you when we need to? Well, Zay Jones is a guy that's got great straight line speed. Right. Right. He's a guy that can take the top off of a defense. And what you want to do with a slot receiver is create room. Well, room doesn't happen unless you have somebody that threatens the vertical aspect of a defense. Right. And so I think Zay Jones, Marvin Jones to some extent can do a little bit of that. Uh, but Zay Jones is somebody that defensive coordinators go, we have to make sure we have somebody over the top on him. And that kind of stretches things in the defense and opens up areas for a Christian Kirk. So, you know, it's like a puzzle and you put these pieces yeah. together. So then the question mark, and I know you're going to ask this, so I'll do it for you. <laughs> How does LaVisca Chenault fit in? Yeah. I, I, I believe that, and, and I've always believed this about LaVisca. LaVisca is not just a wide receiver. LaVisca is a wide receiver. He's an H-back, tight end. He's a running back. And I think he is a mix of all of those. And if he's used in that fashion, then I think he can be a very productive player. If you put him in just the wide receiver role right. or just try to convert him to an H-back, he's multi-talented. But I don't think he excels at anything in particular. Right. The one thing he does excel at is once he gets the ball in his hand, he's physical and he, and he can make extra yardage, yards after catch, yards after contact, especially because he's, he's so big. He's 220 plus yeah. and he's a rock. Yeah. So I think he's going to have a very mixed role. We've seen a little bit of that here yeah. in training camp without talking about too much of scheme stuff. Uh -huh. right. But I think that's the perfect role for him. And, and I think that that is going to be where he's most comfortable at. And that's going to make him a shoe in to make this roster because a lot of people talk, well, is he going to make it? Uh, he's a talent. Uh, he's, he's got a lot of, he's got a lot of special talent. It. 100%. This, I think it's very cool for LaVisca Chanel, almost how self aware he is. A guy that was here every single day in the offseason. We see the weight he's putting on. I think he realizes I didn't have my best year last year. Moving around almost too much. We're seeing the improvement on uh, trading here. And, and let me add this I think in years past, and not to bring up the past too much, but in years past, it was always talked about what guys' roles were going to be from, from the staff. Right. This staff and coaches in general talk about what the roles players are going to earn. Yeah. Okay, there's a difference. Right. You have to let the performance determine what the roles are going to be. And that's what I love about Doug Peterson and his staff because the coaches, they know that something is not given, it's earned. I have to ask you one quick question before we go to break. You saw Debo Samuel and everyone's thinking, well, could LaVisca be Debo Samuel? We saw Cordell Patterson last year, you know, in Atlanta carve a rollout in his first year with the Falcons.
can you see big production from LaVisca, or is that too much to ask? No, I think that's too much. I, I th Debo, I think, is a very special talent when he has the ball in his hands. Coral Patterson, the same thing, an excellent runner with the ball in his hands. I think it's a, it's a little different here with LaVisca. I think LaVisca has a little bit more, because you can't ask Debo Samuel or those guys to play an H-back role. Mm -hmm. I think LaVisca can play like an H-back role. Gotcha. And, and be a willing blocker on the edge of an offense and take on a linebacker and, and you can expect for a stalemate. Uh, those other guys? Right. Not so much. Okay. Being able to do a lot of jobs is a very good thing nowadays. And I think he's got hey, that. I, I'll, I'll say this. When, when I got in the NFL, which was 1989, there was a equipment manager, head guy of the New York Jets, and he was very well respected around the National Football League, Bill Hampton Sr. Oh, yeah, God bless him. One of the best. And the, the Hampton family, great respect for all of them. And he came in and he used to say to me, young man, <laughs> the more you can do, <laughs> the more you can do. Now, and, and, so and, grab this case of towels it, and follow me. Yeah. <laughs> well, it applies to, on the football field, but his little side benefit was he was getting you to fold towels in the uh, laundry. Exactly. <laughs> Free work. Love to hear it. We have much more to come from training camp here at Episcopal High School live on Jaguars Drive Time. You can step up to luxury now. Hello, I'm Dan Fields. Whatever you're driving, you can step up to luxury now. Plus, get our Fields amenities, which include complimentary loaners, car washes, and our cafes. Make this your year to step up to luxury at Fields Cadillac, Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, Land Rover, Jaguar, and Lexus. When it comes to the ultimate car buying experience, there's only one name that matters, Fields. And Fields matters because you matter. The Fields Auto Group, proud partners of your Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey, Jags fans, Brian Sexton for DreamFinders Homes. In a complex housing market, do decisions on the biggest purchase of your life stress you out? At DreamFinders Homes, they can build the home of your dreams in one of their many communities in Northeast Florida. With a mortgage company in-house, they're here to assist you throughout the entire process. Choose from their wide range of single-family homes or townhomes from the 300,000s. DreamFinders Homes specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. Call 904-590-2545 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. Move day is on the 20, the 10. Yes, another successful move to a new home. I tell you, folks, I've never seen a team more prepared than the Move Day crew. With a dominating lead in training, trust, and moving efficiency, it's no wonder why Move Day is the official moving company of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Track your goods online and get updated play-by-plays throughout your move process. While the Jags are moving the chains on game day, they're here to help you on moving day. Call 844-MY-MOVE-DAY or visit movedaymovers.com. We're back live, Jaguars training camp, Jaguars drive time. You're looking at a live look of the Jaguars practice facility, football facility going up. I'll say this is going up really quickly. We notice improvements every single week, so training camp will be there next year. Until now, we're at Episcopal High School, and I got to say, it is an awesome facility. It's definitely doing the job this year. And Sunday, the pads go on, the big day. Jeff, what are we most excited for? Well, for let Sunday? me say this. That's full pads, okay? And and I used to have this discussion with Tom Coughlin. <laughs> oh, was, was it a discussion or was it one of these? <laughs> I don't think he discussed much, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, no, he used to fight with him. Discussion yeah, was, was always relative with Coughlin, yeah, exactly. okay? Uh, but Saturday, they will be in what was considered or is considered uppers, which is shoulder pads. So right. the contact really begins on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Full pads, now you add thigh pads. The and whole knee pads, yep. and then it becomes full pads. And me and Coughlin used to have this discussion because he would consider when we were in uppers, we had thigh pads, no knee pads. Yeah. And then full pads was full pads, you know, even the knee pads. Right. So he used to tell me, he said, you know, I'm giving you this break because we're not in full pads, we're only in uppers. And all it was was uh, knee pads. Thomas, I took my knee pads uh, out. What's him. the difference? I love him. How much do you need? How, if you're an NFL player today, how much time in pads do you need before the first game next week, before the start of the regular Everyone's season? Everyone's very worried about that. Yeah, we only it's, got four days till a game. Yeah, and that, uh, well, it, here's the thing. That game doesn't matter a whole lot, <laughs> okay? And, I, and I'm not trying to be negative and downplay the Hall of Fame game because it's still a competitive atmosphere. But the most important thing is what you're striving for, which is the first game of the season, mm -hmm. not not one first game in the preseason, right. the Hall of Fame game, which is an extra game in the preseason. So there's a there's a build up period, and Doug Peterson has that in mind. Is it enough to get guys perfect? No, but it's a great tool to evaluate your second, third, 
and fourth bubble guys that yeah. may or may not be able to make a football team. You're not going to play your starters in the Hall of Fame game, so you're not you're not doing anything in mind. You of burst saying, my hey, bubble. Play our guys. <laughs> I want to see the running drills on Sunday. Yes. I want to see them get into that nine on seven, and I want to see ETN hit a couple more of Love those Love it. Offensive line, defensive line will be 100%. fun as well. We're looking forward to it. Thank you for tuning into Jaguars Drive Time live from training camp at Episcopal High School. We'll be back in a couple of weeks for our next Jaguars Drive Time. Until then, thanks for tuning in and stay with us on all our coverage on Jaguars.com.